YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name's Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. In today's video, we have something really cool to show you all. Um, you all know our favorite guns to shoot on this channel are 2011s. So of course we are showing you a compensated 2011 pistol. However, this one is from our friends over at Bull Armory. I'm talking about their new SAS2 TAC 4.25 inch comp. Now, as always, I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. Um, last year in November, Bull Armory reached out letting us know about their new TAC line coming out in 2022. They asked us if we would like to get one in for review. Um, you may remember our first Bull Armory review we did on the SAS2 Viper. We had such a blast shooting that little compensated 2011, so of course we wanted to check out the new stuff from Bull Armory as well. They let us know that it would be a few months before production models were ready. Um, they reached out last month letting us know that the sample model had been made for us to review and here we are. Thank you to Ben and Bull Armory for sending us this gun free of charge for this video. Um, we are super grateful for the opportunity to check out the new TAC lineup and we enjoy working with the awesome crew over at Bull Armory. We really like what they are bringing to the 2011 platform as I will explain further in this video. Okay guys, so before we get into the range footage, let's go over the specs of this new offering from Bull Armory. The new SAS2 TAC 4.25 inch comp is part of the new TAC line from Bull Armory. This 2011 platform features their new full size grip module with an aggressive grip texture and double undercut trigger guard. It is chambered in nine millimeter with a 4.25 inch fluted ramped bull barrel and a single port compensator. The compensator is threaded on, however, it is not removable. The gun will ship with an optic plate cut for the RMR footprint. As you see here, we utilize the SRL red dot from Trigicon for this video. The frame is the SAS2 stainless steel frame with Picatinny rail for weapon lights like this Surefire X300 Ultra. The gun also comes with two 19 round magazines. The trigger weight is stated to be between three and three and a half pounds. It will also come with ambidextrous thumb safeties and suppressor height sights and an aluminum magwell. All of this at an MSRP of just under $2,400. Okay guys, so before we move on to the range footage, I do wanna go over a couple of things. Um, if you watched my original video on the SAS2 Viper, you might remember a few things at the end of the video that I wish were different about the gun. I, along with many others, felt this way and the awesome company over at Bull Armory listened to their customer base. Um, with this new tack line, Bull Armory has done several things that I am a fan of. The first is the ambidextrous safeties. Um, I've been shooting the 1911 2011 platform for literally 20 years now. Um, in my opinion, I find it very difficult to shoot these guns left-handed um, if there is not an ambidextrous safety. Additionally, they are now including an optic adapter plate for the RMR footprint. The fact that they are using an adapter plate will allow third-party manufacturers to start making plates for other popular optics on the market to work with this tack line series. I'm happy that they went with the RMR footprint for theirs as that footprint is widely utilized by many red dot manufacturers. Lastly, they now have additional magazines available for purchase. Um, in my first video, I was only able to get two mags and I wasn't able to source additional magazines anywhere. Um, I typically like to have five magazines with every gun that I get. This is normally enough to cover me for a range day or a class, so I was happy that I was able to purchase three additional magazines for this gun. It is always great to see companies listening to their customers who purchase their products and including that feedback in their new product line. Okay, now what you all came here to see, the range footage. Um, Jade and I headed out to one of our shooting spots here in Vegas this past weekend. It is finally starting to get hot here in Las Vegas. Um, when we went out to shoot this video, it was actually around 114 degrees outside already. Regardless, we still love the shoot, so like we always do, we recorded our first shot through the gun, so here's that footage now. All right, guys, these are gonna be the first rounds for the new Bull Armory SAS2 TAC 4.25 inch comp model. Uh, got some 124s in here, and Surefire X300 and a Trigicon SRO attached. So let's see how it goes. Here we go. -hoo -hoo! As expected, uh, this thing is sweet. Um, the gun is not zeroed yet, but uh, I'm not mad at those shots. Uh, you can tell, I think it was my second or third shot. Let's walk over here. Um, as I was in flight reset and pressing back to the wall, that's where this little guy came from. So uh, the trigger definitely um, 
I don't know, it feels great. I just have to get used to it in the first round through it, but that cadence of fire from seven yards, I'll take that all day long. Um, yeah, as expected, this thing is sweet. All right, we got Jade up now. She's gonna do her first rounds through the new SAS2 4.25 inch comp model from Bull Armory. Go for it. Too bad. Um, <laughs> sorry, hold on a sec. There we go. It feels pretty good. Um, the trigger, yeah, like you mentioned, just a little bit you have to get used to it, but otherwise it feels great in your hand. Um, dots, nice and trackable. Uh, it's a great gun overall so far. So right off the bat, we both noticed how flat this gun is. Um, I would definitely say my trigger is closer to three pounds in this model. You guys saw that little flyer head shot on my fourth shot. Um, as I started to prep the trigger, I gave a little too much pressure and that's where that round ended up going instead of in the center bullseye. Um, as we continued into the range day though, we ended up shooting over 500 rounds, which allowed me to become very familiar with this trigger, something you will better understand in this next drill. Speaking of the next drill, you guys all know what that is, our favorite, the build drill. All right, guys, even with 114 degree heat, we're still gonna run our favorite drill, the bill drill. Here we go, seven yards, mini A zone, stand by. One eighty-eight. I missed the first shot through right over the uh, his right shoulder, my left. But let's go again. Stand by. Nice and clean in a one eight six. First shot. One oh five. Whew, I'm liking this. Super easy to get on target. And then a big old SRO. Track that dot all day long. Here we go. Bad draw. One more. Oh, trigger froze on the last one for a one six. First shot was a nine seven, five shots, one six total. Let's go one more time. Here we go, stand by. Six shots, 182 clean, first shot, 1.01. .01. Yeah, man. One seventy eight first shot nine seven clean. So we are always happy with sub two second build drills, especially on a mini A zone steel target. The combination of the heavier weight in this new full size grip module, the large single port compensator, and the wide field of view SRO optic makes it super easy to get on target and stay on target as this gun is just a flat shooter. To further illustrate this, I like to do some shooting on the move. Um, again, the combination of weight, the compensator, and the optic just make it easy to get on target and stay on target even while on the move. In addition to listening to their customer base, Bull Armory has also, in my opinion, gone above and beyond with little touches that I think are often overlooked by other manufacturers. Um, one of them pertains to their magazine base pads. You will notice that their base plate is angled. Um, at first, I thought this might have just been for aesthetics. However, when I was practicing dry fire reloads, I immediately felt how much more natural the magazine felt in my hand and how much easier it was to seat the magazine because of that angle. That, in addition to their aluminum magwell, makes reloads extremely efficient. To better illustrate this, of course, I had to do some 1R1 drills. All right, guys, so like I said in studio, uh, with their magwell and then taking the extra step with this base pad, um, it's just a really small little like design, something that I can really appreciate. Um, when you insert this magazine, the, the base pad is angled, so getting a solid purchase on it and then seating the magazine all the way, it feels super intuitive, feels super natural on your palm. Um, it's not hitting any like awkward points where it's jabbing into your, your hand, and it's just, it's a nice little touch that I really like dig and appreciate. Um, I don't, I've never seen it before and anybody else making an angled 
base pad. But when you insert that magazine, it just feels super nice. Anyway, with their Magwell and the base pads, I figured why not do some 1R1. So here we go, stand by. That was a 227 for a shot 86 with a 141 reload. Let's do a couple more. Whew, kind of set the set the bar pretty high to go at the first one. Woo, 221 again for first shot 0.8 and a split of 141. Felt good. Man, it's crazy how just something small like that, angling that mag, the uh, base pad, just makes a huge difference for me. Two twelve, first shot seven eight, split time of one thirty four. Man, that's like my fastest reload ever. That is sweet. Now these were literally some of the fastest reloads that I've ever done on the 1911 or 2011 platform. Um, so I was definitely stoked on that. Another nice touch I wanna to note is something I know several people complain about. As I started getting into the carry optics world, like carrying a red dot on my handgun a few years back, I began to dislike round indicator cuts in the ejection port or in your barrel. Um, the reason being is because you would have oil or gas come up through that round indicator port and get all over the glass of your optic. Um, I didn't notice this issue and with closer inspection of the ejection port, I noticed that Bull Armory placed their round indicator port on the side instead of directly underneath the front of your optic. Again, this is something I've never seen before and it's so simple and just makes sense. Um, I actually typically press check, however, if you are someone who utilizes that round indicator hole, you still have it right there on the side, but no longer will you have the gas or oil getting all over the glass of your optic. Okay, so all of you know that I have been using that 90 grain plus P blue line ammo from Ultimate Ammunition uh, for my carry ammo. I wanted to take a minute and record our first shots with this ammunition through the gun, so here's that footage now. All right, for those of you familiar with the channel, you guys all know I switched over to the 90 grain plus P blue line ammunition from Ultimate Ammunition. Uh, I want to shoot some through this gun, get my first initial thoughts on it, especially with this comp, because uh, plus P ammo tends to work really well with the comp. So, let's see how these go. Stand by. That felt really good. Um, I feel the slide like cycling faster, but I'm still able to track that dot no problem. I did have a little bit of trigger freeze and that's just me getting used to the uh, bull trigger. I feel like the reset is a little shorter than what I'm used to with the um, staccatos, which I primarily shoot. Um, but I mean, it still feels really nice. You guys saw from the build drills. Yep, digging this thing. All right, we got Jade up. She's gonna try some of that 90 grain goodness from Ultimate Ammunition. Uh, go for it. It feels really good. Um, yeah, I, it feels great. You notice any difference in recoil from the uh, the side on the camera? It definitely looks like like the the recoil is more violent. Violent. Um, it didn't feel like that. Um, no, I mean, I think it felt fine. I didn't really notice a crazy amount of difference. Uh, it wasn't unpleasant at all. Gotcha. It's good. Now I could definitely feel the slide cycling faster. However, I was still able to track the red dot just fine. Um, it's always been my experience that compensated firearms tend to work better with that plus P ammunition. Now with this being a compensated pistol, I wanted to show you guys all the differences in recoil among different grains of nine millimeter ammunition. Uh, so here's that footage now. All right, first set of five, some 124s. Second set of five are some 147s. The last set of five are the 90 grain plus Ps. Next up, I ran that seven yard triangle drill that we showed you all in a previous video. 
All right, guys, you might remember from a previous video, we came with like the seven yard triangle drill. Uh, drill pretty much goes as follows. On the buzzer, I'm gonna draw and fire two rounds on the C zone steel target to the right. That target's seven yards away from our A zone steel target on the left, which is also seven yards away from me. So draw, fire two, transition two, and the goal is to get it under sub two seconds. So here we go, stand by. There it is, 189, nice and clean. Let's see if we can speed that up. One seventy eight clean. Now I'm really liking this drill as it only requires four rounds. Um, it gets you a lot of reps on a faster draw, quickly acquiring your sight picture, a wider than normal transition, and a fast cadence of fire. Um, if any of you guys try this drill and post it on the internet, definitely tag us because we wanna see how you guys are doing with it. Okay, so for those of you who follow us on Instagram, you may have seen some of our recent posts with me showing this setup in our Wingman appendix rig. Um, I actually brought that holster out with us to the range and I figured why not get some concealment work in as well. Um, a full-size gun and a full-size weapon light aren't the most comfortable to carry. It's definitely doable, you definitely conceal it. You can definitely get to everything you need to, um, but it's not gonna be the most comfortable thing going on throughout your day. Um, I know a lot of guys, especially with the like the Roland uh, Special back in the day with the Glock 19 and a comp, they were rocking it all day long. I did for a while as well. Um, but I typically run something like a shorter barrel, like a four, four and a quarter, and a TLR7A. Just more comfortable, especially when you're sitting down. Anyway, let's do some work for concealment. I figured why not do some build drills on um, this big C-Zone steel target from TA Target. Targets. Stand by. Nice and clean for a 192. First shot 109. Okay, I'm digging that. Uh, sub two second build drill from concealment. Let's go again. Through that first round, saw it go right over his right shoulder for a 175. Um, let's tack mag this real quick. And go for one more. Stand by. Nice. And that is a 171 clean. First shot was an 8.8. .8. I'll bring it over here for you. Let me know when you got that. Got it. Cool, so as you guys saw, um, definitely doable guys. For you guys out there that want to run a full size setup uh, and IWB carry, just understand, um, I'm not saying it's like totally uncomfortable, it's not that you can't do it. I'm just saying that a lot of people that do end up trying to run this, um, have never really carried appendix and they'll make complaints about it not being the most comfortable thing. Um, you're 100% right guys, wearing like the biggest gun with the biggest weapon light, uh, concealment and appendix uh, probably isn't going to be the most comfortable. So, but you can definitely put rounds where you want them to go and you can access everything super quick and easy. So run some more drills real quick and then we're gonna head out of here. All right, guys, so as you just saw, uh, with our Wingman Appendix rig, no issues with printing whatsoever, concealment you can do, even with this big size setup. But I know the question that now is going to be, okay, with running a setup like this uh, from concealment, are you gonna be able to get the gun out when time is of the essence, when it matters? How quick are you gonna be able to do that? So with that being said, I figured let's shoot some C-Zone steel, uh, seven yards away, two rounds in sub one second. Here we go, stand by. That is a 109 for shot 9-3. Let's see if we can get it under that one second mark. Nine seven for shot eight one. Got it. Let me go again. Nine five for shot seven nine. Got it. It's one second flat with the 8.3 first shot. Got it. Want to get one more sub though. Nine five, first shot, point eight. Got it. 
as you guys just saw with our wingman appendix rig, even with this larger setup, uh, concealment can easily be done. Now with a setup like this, I did notice that that Surefire X300 light presses up against my leg. Uh, however, it does not start to become uncomfortable to me anyway, until after a few hours of sitting down. Um, when I'm standing up, I actually don't even notice it at all. Um, I do have those friends who are all about carrying the same setup that they do on duty as off duty. Um, so yeah, I have friends that are running full size guns with full size weapon lights in the appendix position. And honestly, they're just used to it from doing it for so long, like years. Um, like I said, in my video though, I typically run a four inch 2011 with a more compact light and I don't even notice it's there. At the end of the day, guys, though, you have to honestly just do what works best for you. Um, I do think that comfort is something that should be considered in regards to carrying concealed because for me, I'm always carrying. Um, it's not something that I take lightly or casually do. It's something that I do all the time and I do it every day. Now, I know some people will ask about our zero. Um, for this video, we used a 10 yard zero for this SRO red dot from Trigicon. Um, once properly zeroed, I like to confirm with a decent sized grouping at a medium cadence of fire. All right guys, so now my overall thoughts on the new SAS2 TAC 4.25 inch comp from Bull Armory. Um, this thing is freaking sweet. I think that you are getting a lot, especially at the price point of $2,380 MSRP. Um, I think that pistols like these are going to definitely give other 2011 manufacturers a run for their money. The gun comes feature rich out of the box and they are features that customers want and small touches that make the gun easier to use. I'm excited to see what else Bull Armory brings in the future. Additionally, guys, if compensated pistols aren't your thing, um, they offer this in a four and a quarter inch and a five inch model without compensator. After shooting this model though, I definitely want to look into their 4.25 inch model and possibly have our buddies over at Vulcan Machine Works port the barrel, um, as I think that would be a really clean EDC setup. Well guys, that's going to wrap up our review of the Bull Armory SAS2 TAC 4.25 inch comp. Again, huge shout out to Bull Armory for sending us this gun. Uh, we had such a good time on the range with it. Congrats on the new launch. I know these things are gonna sell out very quick, if not already. Um, if you guys like the video, please give us a thumbs up down below as that does help out the channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing as we post new videos every week. If you want to further support our content, please check out that Patreon link down below. Um, our Patreon supporters are a huge reason why we keep making these videos for you guys all to watch. Their support is greatly appreciated. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. It's a 110, first shot 9-3, stand by. One oh two, first shot, eight six. One oh nine. Hmm, terrible grip. Whew, nine eight, but a miss. Nine three. How's moving? How was that moving? Nine three again. Ah, oh, didn't hit the mag release. Coming apart. Everything's falling off the wheels. Stand by. Stand by, stand by. First shot, point eight. Stand by. Ah. I feel like as the mag gets lighter, I like, when I go to reload, I'm like throwing it.